boy. Long ago when but a boy at the old church meeting time, how my heart would leap for joy to
Uh, we used to have a brother, still do really, that they get up and say, well, I'm a high school principal and let people know just how smart they are. Well, I can tell you, I'll, I want to confess to you today that I didn't, I'm not a high school principal and I never was and I didn't, and I never was very smart. I always thought that I was not, I thought that I was a little bit lower than everybody else, but still, and never was able to speak. Well, I was never able to speak out in the public, but one day God came to me. Well, God came to me and blessed me to be able to stand up. Well, he said to stand, have your lords girt about with the truth. Well, he told me to put on the whole armor of God. the wicked. Why well, that you may be able to stand up or uh, stand up against Satan. Well, because Satan has gone out into this world and I know I know that sometimes it seems like it seems like a fairy tale when we talk about heaven. Well, but there is a place. Oh, well, there is a place of pure delight. Well, where the angels are singing today. And I believe we've got mothers and dads over in that country. Well, I believe we've got and aunts and brothers and sisters over there. Wow, well, that heaven is real today. Oh, that's a real place and I want to go. Well, I want to go whenever. You know, it just seems reasonable to me that still, that, you, that all the things that man know in this world, men and women and all the things that they've learned, well, still they can't create life. And Jesus says, in Him is life. In Him is life. Out of all the things that man's able to create today and able to make, in him is life. And his life was the light of man. Oh, I tell you, that that's, his, in his life, that's where we get our understanding, brother. Brother Jerry, we get our, well, we get our understanding from that light that comes up from heaven and shining in the dark place. Well, there's a, there's a light today that shines down from heaven. That's Jesus' light. Well, he'll shine that light up to you and make that. Wow, well, he'll light it. He'll make light come where there was darkness. Well, he can change your life. Well, he will change your life if you'll only call on him. If you'll call on him, he'll change your life. And he'll make you. You know what? Whenever that God changes your life, it's hard to figure out how in the world that you ever was able to think the way that you thought before. And I and what and for me to and for me to stand up and say, Well, how in the world was I why you know, why wouldn't I speak out in the out of the public? And why wouldn't I do this? Well, it's just through it's just through the insecurity yeah, of this person here. Well, but God has made us wise men and wise women. Well, Above every name that's ever been named in this world, Jesus is that name today. His name is above every, above every name. What he talks about, Job talks about, he says, And dost thou open thine eyes upon such an one, and bringest me into judgment with thee? Well, who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? Not one. We can't, we could never, we couldn't clean ourselves up no matter what we did. It seemed like that I, that I went around for so long trying to, well, I, I would try to dress a certain way, and I went out, and you know, back at that time, whenever that I, Whenever I was trying to get right with the Lord, everybody went around with long hair and looked like Ringo Starr. And we all had, we all went around. And I remember, I remember some little girl talking about Brother Johnny, and she'd say, "Oh, that's my Paul McCartney." And we, you know, it was so funny looking now to look back at some of that stuff. Oh, I just think about, well, how funny looking we were, and to and to think that we were cute. But I'll tell you that God, well, God made me realize one day, well, that without Him, I'm nothing. Whenever I got down low in the valley, I wasn't trying to, I wasn't trying to see how pretty I could make myself. Well, but I thought if I can just get my, if I can just dress a certain way, if I can just act a certain way, like these Christian people act, but if, uh, out of all that I could do, I couldn't do it. Out of all that I, as hard I couldn't, I couldn't 
couldn't make myself. I couldn't make myself into a Christian. And I tried. I tried for year after year trying to make a Christian out of myself. Why? the table. And all I had to do was speak to him. All he had to do, all, all I had to do was say, Lord, have mercy upon me, sinner. You know that, how simple that is. It is. How simple it is and how hard that I made it. And he said that, oh, he said that you can't bring a clean thing out of an unclean, but God can make them. Well, God can make you over again. God can take that unclean spirit and put a clean spirit in there. And, may, and He'll lead you and guide you. Whoa! He'll lead you and guide you to righteousness. It's all in Him. Whoa! He said that oh, seeing His days are determined, the number of His months are with thee. It don't look like that you could hardly do anything to help somebody. Whoa! It doesn't look like you could do anything to help some people. Whoa! But God can. Yeah, he can. Whoa! God can! God is almighty! God is almighty. He's able He's able to reach down into our miserable lives and lift us up and make us to sit in heavenly places. Thank you. And make me to be able to feel like I feel today. There's nothing in this world. I know that there's not. I know that I know that whenever I know that whenever that I was younger and I didn't have him, well, there was nothing in the world that could make me stand up here. But I know that he is. You must believe that He is. He is. A, is he's an is God. He's not just was, and He's not just used to be. Well, but He is. Why well, you must believe that He is, and He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. He'll reward you today. Well, the best reward you ever had in your life. God will give you that reward. Well, He said, seeing His days are determined. The number of his months are with thee. Thou hast appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. You know, if you just looked at men, if you just looked at men and said, well, this is just how it is. We live and we die. You know, if we, like one of the writers said, if man would have only hope in this life, if it, if it was just hope you had in this life, we would be of all men most miserable. Just think about what, how miserable you'd be if you didn't have, if you wasn't thinking, yeah. if you weren't thinking today about, if you weren't thinking today about mom and dad over there. Wow, I'll be there to say they're over there in that land rejoicing. And you know it's hard to believe unless you have him. It's hard to believe today unless you have him. He said, "For there's," he said, "Turn from him that he may rest, till he shall accomplish as in hiring his day." Well, he just, it doesn't look like we could do much for people, but he goes on to say, "For there's hope of a tree if it be cut down." And you know, I and I and I, whenever you read that part of the scripture, you think about. You think about this guy right here and you say, well, there's hope of a tree if it be cut down. But that's not what he's saying. He, he said, for, for there's hope of a tree if it be, be cut down. And he's not talking about this tree. He's talking about that tree right out there. He said, there's hope of a tree if it be cut down. Oh, that it will sprout again and the tender branch thereof will not cease. So you see sometimes it's like that dogwood tree that Colleen was working on yesterday. And she's out there squirting it with, with dishwater and everything else. Trying to get that thing to come back. Oh, but I tell you, sometimes the best thing that you can do was take down her dad. Her dad had come into a place and he was about the best I've ever seen. And he'd, be, he'd just about scare people to death. He tried to trim her hedges with a chainsaw. But he'd go in there and he could just... And he, it looks like it would look like that he just went in there and destroyed everything. But he cut the heads off of every one of them. He made you think of some of this head religion that we get. He came in there, and some fellow told him one time, he said, well, you just cut down all my bushes. He said, yeah, I know, he said, but they'll come out again. Oh, he said, they'll come out again. There's life in that root. Branch thereof will not cease. 
Oh, I'll tell you that God knows right where. God knows right where you are today. He said, though the root wax old in the earth and the stock die, thereof die in the ground, yet through the scent of water it will bud and bring forth boughs like a plant. Uh, you know, it may be the, the best thing we talked yesterday. And you know, me and Colleen have finally figured out that sometimes it's better to just cut the tree down and let it sprout out again because her dad was a wise man and he knew these things. And you know, we talked about that yesterday. You hate to see something go. Yeah. Oh, but sometimes, it's tough. sometimes you just have to cut it down and say, I'm starting my life. Why? Well, I'm starting my life and I'm placing everything. Oh, just cut the just cut the thing down and say, I'm the Lord, I'm yours. I'm yours and you're mine. And I hope that you'll bless me. And I'll tell you that's what I did that night. I, yeah, he cool. cut down he cut he cut my very head right right off all of that all of that religion that I had. All of that stuff that had been planted in my mind. No wonder my dad said that time whenever I went into the house with this Bible that they had made a, a new Bible and it said good news for modern man. And he read and he picked it up and he and and you know I and he said and he began to open and he and he looked in there and he saw where this was changed and that was changed. Oh and he started singing, give me that old time religion. Give me that old Didn't even realize the impact that that would have, that would make on my life. Oh, but I remember that day. I remember that day. Oh, I remember that it was just simple. It is, you know, like that old song says, it "Was not a flowery sermon, wife, but simple gospel truth." It filled humble men like me, and it suited, or it suited humble men like me. Oh, it suited hopeful youth. Wow, there was wow. There's life in Him today. There's life in Him. There's life as long as you've got Him. Whoa, and He said that He goes on to talk about men. And He said, but man die and waste the way. Well, you know, the very time, from the time we're born into this world to whenever that we die, we're just growing. We start out we start out just like these little babies and everything's new and we begin to our bodies begin to grow older and older until one day that they grow too old to live in this world and, the, and that soul you know I've seen these souls and I know that some of these people that are doctors and things they know they've seen many souls leave this world and you know you can't see you can't see the soul leave but you can tell that something's gone out of them you can tell that the life has gone out of them you can I stood and watched my dad over my dad and whenever that he reached his hand up he reached his hand out towards whoa reached his hand out towards heaven you know, somebody must have taken hold of his hand. I think he would. I think for a minute he would have taken hold of Brother Chris, but he's still. Wow! Well, I believe in a greater power grabbed him that day. Whoa, well, and that happened. It happened to him the way that that dream was when he said, I began to grow life. Yeah. Well, I was caught up to heaven. Oh, uh, we'll be caught up someday. Well, that's the way that I want it. That's the way that I want to die. And I know we go in different ways, but still, still God, still God knows that our every, every situation that we have. Well, but He said, but as the waters fail and the, from the sea and the flood decayeth and dryeth up, so shall man lieth down and riseth not till heaven shall be no more. You know, someday we'll, someday these bodies will lay them. It's not so bad. It's not so bad because you know all that, all that, all of that life and all of these things that, all of these concerns, all of this stuff that you're so concerned about today, that'll all be taken away. And you'll be.
be free. You'll be like that old, you'll be like that old, that old man that, that preached to me years ago, that Martin Luther King. He'll say, it's like that old time spiritual. Well, I'm free at last. I'm free at last. Thank God Almighty. I'm free at last. Someday we'll be free. Someday we'll be free from these old earthly tabernacles. Oh, but Peter said, I, I think it meet that as long as I'm in this tabernacle to always put you in remembrance of the things that you once do. Wow, well, you once knew them. I think it meet that I could that I would always put you, always let you remember these things. Remember, remember you remember. You know, we forget sometimes. We forget, and I do that a whole lot in my life. I forget, I'll go, I'll go home and I'll forget how well that the Lord blessed me. And I and I won't say and I'll say, well, you know, you know, it's you know, you know, I woe is me, and I've got all these troubles. Whoa, wow, that I'll tell you, wow, that God's able to lift you up again. God's able to lift you up again. The next time, the writer said that though this outward man perish. Yet the inward man is renewed day by day. We'll get he gives us that he gives that us that renewed spirit and we can shout and praise his holy name again. Or oh, we can do things that we never thought was possible in our lives. Well, and he said that so man lieth down and riseth not till heaven shall be no more. They shall not awake nor be raised out of their sleep. You know he's talking about this body here. See, a while ago he was talking about a tree and, a, and how that a tree, well, there's, there's hope of a tree if it be cut down. There's hope of a tree that if it be cut down that it'll, that even though the, even though the root wax old in the earth and the stump dieth also in the ground, that through the sound of water, water it will rise up! That God will still bless, God will still bless life to come out of there. But he said that a man lieth down and he said he wasteth away. He said, oh, that thou wouldest hide me in the grave. Yeah. Oh, I tell you that. I think of that sometimes and I think about I think about whenever they whenever the story about Elisha, whenever the well, they he was out in he was out in the field somewhere. Out in the, you know you you watch these TV shows and you see these people on these westerns and things. And here they are way out somewhere out in, out in out in Colorado or somewhere and they and they are out in Texas or somewhere and they're out in the desert place and they dig a hole and put somebody in and I said, well, you know they they're going to lay out there by themselves all that time, all the, the, through eternity and still. Well, but still God knows. Where where they are, God. Why in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth? Why the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face yeah. of the deep? Why did God draw life out of there? God created a man right out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and he became a living soul. Why God became, God allowed you to become a living soul. And whenever that that Spirit of God or the Spirit of man leaves, this old body has to go back to the dust. But you know, whenever that they they were fighting a, they were having a great battle out there. It seemed like out, in, I picture it out in the middle of nowhere, and they were, and there was a man that died, and they, oh, they they went out and they dug a hole and tried to and tried to throw him in there. Oh, but in there was the bones of Elisha the prophet. Why that man sprang out of that hole? Because that was, that man was special in God's eyes. Oh, you're special in His eyes today. It don't make any difference how how we look, brother JG. We're still special in His eyes. Wow, God is still blessing us to live. In Him we live, and still He said, "Oh, that Thou wouldest hide me in the grave, and Thou wouldest keep me in secret until Thy wrath be passed." There's a there's a time coming that this whole earth, the earth shall pass away with a great noise. There's going to be a noisy time someday. And this, this old earth is going to shake and the earth shall cast out the dead that are in them. And you know that it seems like, it seems like that it's unreal to me 
think about what a what a day the the resurrection day will be. What a day that will be. I don't hardly. I sometimes I can see seem like I can see it, and it seems so real to me. And in some days it seems like a fairy tale. Yeah. But still, God still blesses me. He knows all about us. He knows all of our weaknesses. He said, "Oh, that Thou wouldst hide me in the grave, and Thou wouldst keep me in secret until Thy wrath be past." And that was the point of set time. God's got a set time for us. Well, God's got a set time for us. God set a time. Well, all that He's going to say is it. It's over. Yeah. And the earth shall cast out her dead. Uh, this is going to be a noisy place someday. It may not be, we not, may not have very many people out here today, but this will be a, there'll be a lot more noise than my mouth runs. There'll be a whole lot more noise than me shouting. Yeah. Why well, they'll be singing? They'll be shouting. Why well, they'll be sorrow and they'll be pain. They'll be preaching and singing when the Lord comes again. Ah, uh, there'll be a time whenever that man, well, oh, that you'll be able to look up and see yeah. him. Hallelujah. What? Well, and they sing about. They sing about heaven. But today, heaven is real. Heaven's a real place today. And real people go there. And the very, the very thing that gave you life is going to flee this body someday. And this body will fall. And it won't be till, till God says. And he said, if a man dies, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change comes. There's a change coming. He's going to make no wonder the, you know, the old Baptist people have always, we always believed in a, in a death and burial and resurrection. If anybody ever believed in a resurrection of the dead, this old, if anybody ever had a theme, this has been our theme. Yeah. If anybody's ever had something, and and still even our even our baptism, even our, this water baptism that we do, well, it all represents the same resurrection of the dead. It all it all represents if there what if there be no resurrection of the dead, then Christ be not risen. So you see, we know that Christ is risen. And he promised us that he he said, if I go away, I'll prepare a place for you. Oh, I tell you today that I'm I I don't know what I don't know what kind of place it'll be, and I don't I don't know what heaven just exactly looks like. Well, but one of the writers, one of the writers, whatever that he was talking about it. Well, he was talking about a city, a city that's paved with gold, a city that's walled with jasper, and the streets are pure as gold. Oh, bless God today in the what he talked about the pearls. What? And all the beautiful stones. And it was just not that heaven is not that heaven is going to be made of those things, but it's that beautiful. That it's that pure. Describe it with yes. And you know that's what that's all that we can understand. He said, Thou shalt call, and I will answer thee. Thou wilt have a desire to the work of thine hands. It, God made us. God made us in the beginning. God in the beginning, God made man. He made man of the dust of the ground and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And when he takes that breath away, this man can't live any longer. We can do all that we can do and he still, still sometimes you can't reach him. He said that for now, thou numbers my steps. What if you just knew how, how long you had? Would you, if you thought maybe this might be your last day, would you, would you be talking to him? You know that's the way we've got to look at our lives. We got to look at our lives and say that this may be our last day. And no wonder, no wonder that old mothers and dads used to say, sing those old songs just a little longer, sweet Jesus. Whoa! Just a little longer, sweet Jesus. Just a few more days to get our loved ones in. Just, 
Well, I'll just prolong it just a little while, but God knows all things. And he said, My transgression is sealed up in a bag, and thou sowest up mine iniquity. He knows all about us. Well, he knows whenever that we're going. He knows, and it's not, you know, we wouldn't, it would be no benefit for us to know what grief and sorrow we'd have in our life if we knew one would be gone tomorrow. But you know, that's the way that he wants you to, that's the way that he wants you to feel whenever that he, whenever that he says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man will open the door, I'll come in and sup with him. I'll tell you that I've supped with him today. We the old timers used to say that that they would suck the, suck something out of the saucer and they'd put a little coffee in there and take a little sup out of the saucer. Well, I'll tell you that it seems like it's it's awful good. Oh, that's awful good to oh, to take a little broth or whatever and take a little sup out of the saucer. But he said, "I'll come in. I'll come in and sup with you and you with me." What? Bless God to that. But there's no greater thing. There's nothing more wonderful to me in my life than to be able to sit down at a table with Him. Well, it's up with Him and Him with me. Well, He said that He would always be with us even unto the end of the world. He said, I'll never leave you and forsake you. And I know He said, and surely the mountain falling, falling cometh to naught. And the rock is removed out of his place. The waters near the stones. Thou washest away the things which grow out of the dust of the earth, and thou destroyest the hope of man. Thou prevailest forever against him, and he passeth. Thou changest his countenance and sendest him away. Ah, uh, sometimes, sometimes it seems like that we just go away. Oh, we come. There was there was so many times that I that I've gone and asked God for something and and you know it was no benefit. God knows all things about you. God knows whenever you ask Him whether it's to your benefit or not. Yes, He does. In Him is in Him is life, and He's in Him is love. God is love, and whosoever is born of God is born of love. And things may look grim, but like that old man said that was preaching that time. He said that when Jesus was said that when Jesus was hanging on the cross and they delivered him out there, he said it's Friday, the Sunday's coming. Why well, maybe Friday? It may be awful grim to you today, but Sunday's coming. Well, there may be that you may have to leave this world today, but Sunday's coming. Well, you may have to go away sad. Well, but there's a resurrection yeah, the morning. Jesus. Well, that he had he said it's Friday but Sunday's coming there's, sun, there's Sunday coming for some of us if ever if you ever if you ever get the courage you ever get the courage in your life to lay aside every weight if you ever get enough courage in your life you know I, I didn't know I thought that I was brave and I thought I could do just about whatever I wanted to but one day God reached down into my life and He gave me the courage to call. You can't even, you can't even taste the Scripture say, how can, they, how can they call on whom they've not believed? And how can they believe in whom they've not heard? But how can they hear without a preacher? Well, I'll tell you today that whenever, well, whenever, the, well, one day God gave me the courage to call on Him and I, and I laid everything aside. And I said, Lord, have mercy upon me, a sinner. I didn't, I didn't know what to do. Whenever that I came up and got offered my hand to the church, I didn't know what to say. Oh, they say, well, I, well, he came in preaching and he come out of the water preaching. I didn't know what to say. All I knew was that I felt so good. Yeah. All I knew was that I had surrendered my life to him and he gave me the courage to stand up. He gave me the courage to move out into one of these aisles and move. And it seemed like that whenever that whenever that he gave me that courage and I moved out, that he 
carried me the rest. Yeah, he kept you. And it was so wonderful to me. And I know me. sometimes it seems like that it's not that it's not real. Yeah. And sometimes I get awful worried. I get awful worried about my family and all and things that are going on. And, but there's an old song. that some of the brothers sing it says sometimes I feel like a wheel turning and going round and round from sun to sun it don't seem like you know it seems like yesterday was Friday but see how already tomorrow and Monday and it's back to work again sometimes we feel like just a wheel turning going round and round from sun to sun and that don't seem like we get anywhere in this world but still and then I and then I look away across the old Jordan Whoa! They know our these brothers can write such songs. Why did I look away across all Jordan? Oh, for a little bit of joy when I get home. And I feel a little revival in my body. Oh, I'll tell you, you want revival? Why you want revival in your body? Come on here. Come on, Jesus. Why oh, give me Jesus? You can have this whole world. Thank you, Lord. Oh, give me Jesus. Oh, he'll put revival in your body. Oh, he'll take these, oh, he'll take these old miserable lives. And he'll give you real life. He really will. He'll give you the life. Wonderful. He'll give you a wonderful life. There's a, there's, a, there's a deal that comes on every Christmas called a wonderful life. But if you want a wonderful life, get him. If you want a wonderful life, call on him while you've got it. While you have opportunity. <laughs> and still, I know that Lord, I, I know that the many times that I've gone away and I've said, well, well, I was able to hold out another, another week. But you know, I get to where I am today and wonder how in the world that I ever and I thought that I was strong, and when I was strong, it was all it was was weakness. And you know, sometimes we talk about brothers or sisters, so, oh, that's a strong brother. You know, if everything in the world offends you, that's a weakness that you've got. You, and it talks about, the scriptures tell you that if, it, well, that if, that if something that you do would, uh, well, would offend one of the weak, one of the weak, to do it not. Boy, he's talking about he's talking about things that you do in this world that would cause somebody to be offended. But you know, if the, if God offends you, if the Word of God offends you today, they used to. My dad used to talk about this brother that would get up every time and say, "I'm I'm going to hit you with the Word of God, and if it kills you, I don't care." And, and that's about the way it is. Why? It's just about the way it is today. Why well, we've just got to lay the word of God out. Why well, did let it land where it lands? He said, "The kingdom of heaven." Whenever that they asked Jesus that day, "Why well, tell us about the kingdom of God?" Why well, he said, "The kingdom of heaven is like a man that went out to sow seed, and some fell by the wayside, and the and the birds of the air came and devoured it up." Why? Well, the word of God oh, that goes out into this world. Sometimes the word just goes out and it falls. And it don't bring forth anything. The birds of the birds of the air. Air come around. Come around and devour it up. And he said, he said, and, and some, he said, some fell on stony ground. Some will fall on stony ground. Oh, the word has, you know there's not much death. Oh, there's not much depth and there's no place for the roots to grow. Oh, and he said the needle, and immediately it sprang up. Well, immediately it sprang up. Well, soon the sun came out. We've seen some of these. We've seen some of these in our lives. Soon the sun comes out and it burns them. Well, and they wither away. Well, he said the sun. And some fell among thorns. Some fell among corns and thistles. Or oh, some fell out. Some, some will fall out in the weeds somewhere. And the weeds will come out and choke the Word of God out. Some will, what he said, but some. Well, some fall on good ground. Well, some fall on good ground. And I know, I know that that day, you know how you get that ground ready? Sometimes you. Sometimes you can go.
go out to Brother Charlie's and see him and his brother out there grubbing around in that dirt. And it looks like that they're dirtier than the ground is. And it seems, but that's just exactly how it is whenever that you get right with the Lord. Sometimes you just have to get down. Sometimes you have to get down on your knees and get dirtier than the ground is. Why? Say, Lord, have mercy upon me. And you'll be surprised what a beautiful garden that he'll grow. You'll be surprised. You wouldn't figure that old dirty man that's out there whenever you watch old Bud sometimes but, but they can, and him and Brother Charlie and have and, and get all, all grubby and dirty and, and all the beautiful things that grow out of that ground. But you know they never, uh, if you go by them, they don't ever seem to stop working at it. And that's the way that God is. He never stops working at it. He said that some fell on good ground. Well, and it brought forth fruit, some, so, some 20, 30, or whatever, 60, or 100 fold. Wow, some brought forth good fruit. Do you know that that's whenever that you get down on your knees and do like Brother Charlie does, probably Brother Jerry too. I, don't, I can't figure neither one of them got enough strength to stand up too long, so they got to get down on their knees. Well, that's just exactly how. That's just exactly how that I got right with the Lord. I got down and I grubbed around till, what well, till I got, what well, till I got relief in my life. Yeah, you get an answer. He will answer. And you know that whenever that he got, when I got down low enough, <clears throat> that I turned it all over to him. What a beautiful garden he grew. You may not look at me and see anything pretty. Oh, but there's something pretty in here. Well, the Lord Jesus Christ is in there. Well, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. No wonder the writer can say that. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. And he leads me beside the still waters. Well, he restores my soul. Well, I'm thinking about what a dark soul that I have.
He said that surely goodness and mercy. You know what goodness and mercy is? It's Him. He's goodness. He's mercy. One, an old brother told my dad one time, he said, Brother Tommy, when I die, preach, preach over me. He said, and say that God is not slack. Surely today that you see that God is, look at me and my body. God is not slack concerning His promises. As some men count as slackness. But His long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, that all should, well, that all should repent. God is not slack today. We may be slack. We may be, we may be lost and undone in this world, but God is not slack. Well, God's promises are real, but God's promises today. He promised us a, have, a home in heaven, and I'm looking for it. He said, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And I'm hoping someday to I'm hoping someday to see that place. Yeah. That whether like the writer said, to live is Christ and to die again. Yeah. He said, I'm in a strait betwixt two. Paul Paul wrote that in yeah. and he and he said, I'm in a strait betwixt two, having a desire to be to depart and to be with him. Well, I'll tell you today that sometimes we get in a strait betwixt two. Well, And we won't have to worry. We won't have to worry anymore. There's an old song that says we'll... We won't have to worry anymore. Here on earth we worry, but we won't have to worry over there. Now I'm going to close. And I know... I know that my Redeemer liveth. Job said... I think Job said in chapter 19... He said, I know that my Redeemer liveth. And he, t he said that he would come, he said that in his flesh, he said, yet in my flesh, I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. Well, you see, Jesus, Jesus has already stood here. He stood on the mount. He stood on the mount that day, and he proclaimed, that heaven could be your home if you want to go. He said that I know that my Redeemer liveth, and he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh I shall see God. That's what we... I'm looking for these mothers and dads of ours to come out of there so you don't care. I'm looking for someday for, them, for these graves to open. And it may not be in my lifetime, but you can look for me. Look for me that day. Wow, well, look for me! And I, I hope to come out of there shouting and praising His name. And be caught up together. Oh, for the trump shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Wow, well, the trump shall sound! Oh, that angel will blow that trumpet, and out of there we'll come. It, I don't it's it's so incredible that it's that no wonder no wonder we talk about miracles and still I'm a miracle today I know that I know that whenever I was in the hospital over there that they weren't able to do anything and touch my body they may have been able to but they didn't but still I called for the elders of the church and they came and anointed me with oil and they prayed that God would reach down his arm of mercy to me and he did and I'm standing here today to tell you that Jesus is a rock in a weary land he's a shelter in the time of storm so I'm going to close and if anybody here has been praying if your life is if your life is
seems to be gone like mine was. And Young didn't even have enough sense to know. But still, it seemed like my life was about gone. And that if you've been praying and you want to take up membership with this old Baptist family, that while we sing this old song, that you'd not be ashamed.